All right, everybody. We are going to start off this episode with a deep breath. Ready? Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay. So, <laughs> this intro is maybe a little bit more subtle and calm than you're used to. Um, and for that reason, I am going to be doing a little bit of a change of pace here today. I know typically I'm very upbeat and positive and full of energy and I'm here to give you your 45 to 60 minutes of encouraging words. Um, and I like want to be that person for you, but I feel like this past week especially I've really been struggling with a lot of things. And so for me to sit down behind this microphone and act like I'm feeling one way and giving you all of this advice, but then actually feeling a certain way in real life is like very mentally draining for me. I feel a lot of guilt and I feel a lot of pressure. And I kind of started to open up about this on TikTok yesterday. Um, just this past week, I've been trying to record a solo episode. I've been in a funk. I've just really not been able to do it. And yesterday I sat down to record. Um, I was like, okay, today's the day I'm gonna do it. You know, I'm going on this trip this weekend. I'm gonna be behind on work, so I need to catch up. And I did my makeup, I did my hair, I put on an outfit and like once I fully got ready, I was like, I don't feel good. Like I thought that this was gonna help me and if anything, it kind of made me feel worse. And so then I sit down behind my camera and I'm like looking at myself in the preview and I'm just like, how am I supposed to do an episode today about not liking the city that you live in when really I just don't even like myself and like that's what I should really be talking about so then I went on TikTok and I said you know kind of some of those thoughts that I feel really conflicted and I feel like I'm kind of living a facade like a double life and I'm putting out one content but then I'm not actually living it and so a lot of people were like Jenna why don't you make this the topic like why don't you just talk about this kind of stuff because this is relatable this is real and like this is helping me actually in just this one little TikTok. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do today. Um, a girl commented on my post and said, why don't you make the episode not so fun on weekdays? And honestly, I love that because I mean, it's true. Realistically, there's not a single person out there that doesn't go through a hard time in their life or, you know, a funk and you have a bad day or you have a bad week or a bad month and you, it, it's so easy to be consumed by your own negative thoughts of yourself. And I feel as though um, a lot of the episodes that I make are the things that I need to hear myself. Because, I mean, it's so easy to give advice to other people, um, but to actually take my own advice, that's hard. <laughs> Anyone to take their own advice, nobody ever does that. You're giving advice to your friend about a breakup. Realistically, if you're in their shoes, you're not going to do that, what you're telling them to do. And so I feel like when I record these episodes, the ones that I'm proud of are the ones that I can listen back to and I can take advice from myself. So that's kind of my goal today. Um, I have to be honest, I did record an episode right before this. It was like 35 minutes and I just listened back to it and I was like, wow, I'm not... I don't know, I'm, I'm like anxious about it. I, I feel like maybe people would think that this is self-pity and I'm just, you know, asking for people to feel bad for me and that's not the case at all. I really want this episode to just be a sense of like humanity, I guess, and just a realization that literally people that you see on the internet are like real people and even some of the people that you look up to, like everybody has real feelings and if I can share some of my feelings right now and it helps other people then that's what the whole point of this podcast is so um one thing that i said was just kind of feeling like i'm living a double life um last week i came off of an episode with serena kerrigan and she's like the most confident person i've literally ever met and i think it's hard for me when a lot of people think that i'm so confident and they come to me asking for advice of like how are you so confident and sure of yourself and like just bold and to me it's kind of hard because I don't feel that way but I feel like people want me to be that and so it is kind of like a Hannah Montana moment where I'm like okay to one pe to like to some people when I pick up this microphone every Tuesday 
I am the most confident person that you're listening to, but with the microphone aside and I'm getting ready in the morning and I'm looking at myself in the mirror, I'm not confident at all. And I think that confidence is literally a show. Like to so many people, it's a show, it's an, it's an act. And like to an extent, if you think you're confident, then you are. But like if you're just pretending to be confident because you think that people want you to be that, then that's what the act is. And so today's episode, um, I don't really have an outline or anything for it. I just kind of wanted to share my thoughts and feelings. So this might be kind of all over the place, but as I was reflecting on what I wanted to say, um, when you do get in these moods and these like funks and you're really depressed or anxious or paranoid or just very negative to yourself and and you catch yourself saying like such mean things to yourself, whether it's out loud or it's making fun of yourself or it's thinking horrible things about yourself when you're looking in the mirror, like to get out of that mindset is so hard. And this is a forewarning that I have no key to how to get out of it. Um, so if you, if you have any advice, let me know. I would love to share it, but, uh, or I would love to take your advice. Um, but when I was thinking about like why you get into these kind of funks, um, I kind of split it up into different, you know, levels. So one is like your physical insecurities, you know, like the things that you don't like about your body or yourself. And then you have like relationships, the things that you're insecure about with that, or like the things that make you paranoid or anxious or competitive or jealous, um, Then you have like your friendships and like social settings. Then maybe you have your careers. Like there's so many different facets to your life that can kind of cause you to be in these moods. And so I'm just gonna tell you guys what's been going on with me (laughs) and show you guys like the real Jenna. So I guess starting with like physical insecurities, which gosh, let me just like lay it out on the line. Um, I mean, is there anybody in the world that can't find something wrong with themselves? Like, we all are obviously our biggest critics, but I mean, just recently, I, I've been so mean. And I even said it in a video. I was like, I hate how my body looks in this outfit. And I don't know if it actually doesn't look bad or if it, I mean, I don't know if it actually does look bad or if it's just, I think it does because, you know, I'm talking bad to myself and I'm, I'm noticing like ripples in my stomach or like my hip dips or cellulite, you know, all of those little things. I'm like, is anybody else noticing that? And if they are, then like, I don't want to wear this. I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel confident, you know? So like my physical insecurities, I mean, people always say, look, one of the things that you can do to help yourself is to look in the mirror and compliment yourself and say five good things to yourself. Okay. Well, what about those days when you look at yourself in the mirror and you just cry? because you don't like what you see looking back at you. Like, what about that? Why is nobody talking about that? How, like, I mean, yeah, I understand, you know, saying nice things to yourself in the mirror and like is one thing, but to actually accept those words and to believe it is another thing. And who am I to like tell you how to do that when I personally literally did that yesterday? Um, I, I mean, I feel like everybody has those days where you wake up and like, maybe you're a little bloated and, Maybe your your pants aren't fitting you the way that you want them to. Or maybe you put on a tank top and your shoulders look broad or you're, you feel like your arms are too muscular or, you know, you have like that little, that little thing in your armpit. I, you know what I'm talking about? I have some tops that are too tight and it does that. And I'm like, I look at that and I'm like, I'm, I'm disgusting. I hate it. But the thing is, if I were looking at any other person in the world other than myself, I would never think that about them. Like I especially going back to, you know, last week's episode with Serena, if, if you haven't listened to it, like seriously, I said, I love that in response to basically everything she said, because it's true. Most of the things that she said to me, I was just kind of in awe. I didn't even know what to say. And she caught me talking so badly about myself. But one of the things she said was, if your friend comes in and she's wearing an outfit, you're never going to talk to her and be like, that's fucking ugly. Like you would say to your friend, love the outfit, you look great, but like maybe let's put on something different tonight. And I feel like that's one thing that I, I, I took from her episode especially was just the way that I talked to myself that I wasn't even aware of. And maybe that's why I've been so emotional this week because ever since being with her, 
when I am talking badly about myself, I'm like, oh my God, I didn't even realize I was doing that. And I've been doing it for so long and so often that now that I'm acknowledging it, it like upsets me how, how badly I treat myself when I would never do the same to another person. And like, aren't we supposed to be the person that's there for ourselves? Like, aren't ourselves supposed to be the one person that you can count on? And I don't feel like I've been able to count on myself lately. So, I mean, like the physical insecurities, uh, one thing, and I'll be completely honest, is I constantly look for what I can do right now to make me feel better, to fix it. So if that's like, my hair my hair is thinning it's getting gray i lost a lot of hair from covid i like my roots are so bad okay what can i do to fix that well i can spend thousands of dollars on extensions i can dye my hair i can dye my roots i can buy you know supplements to make my hair grow I can do all of those things that'll that'll fix it right that'll make me feel better well okay i fix that now but my face is breaking out and i have acne and you know, I am putting on makeup and it's just making it look worse. And I'm paranoid that people are looking at my face and they're only looking at my acne and that's all they see when they look at me because that's all I see. Okay, well, I mean, I could spend hundreds of dollars on like facials and getting high-end skincare and like maybe that'll help, you know, maybe the acne will go away and then I'll, I'll be perfect and I'll feel good and I will be back to normal. Well, then the acne goes away and then I take out the scale from under my cabinet that I swore I was never going to use and I step on the scale for the first time in a year and a half and see that I've gained 12 pounds from the last time that I stepped on it. Okay, um, all right, well, I guess I, I don't need to eat today. I guess I could just work out for longer. Um, I could look up natural ways to lose weight. I could do a juice cleanse. I could look up supplements that I can take to lose weight. I can, I can do literally anything in my power so that I'm skinnier. But like, I can tell you right now, this time last year, I was stick thin. I literally was, was so skinny because I did all of that. Like that was my solution at that time. I was in a horrible place. I had just had COVID. So I like lost a good amount of weight and then I'll be honest, I was taking Adderall like a couple times a week because my roommate had it and like she wasn't taking it. So I took it because I couldn't focus on my job. I didn't feel like I was excelling in my career and like the Adderall was helping with that. But then it would be nine o'clock and I'd realize that I hadn't eaten a single thing all day and then skip forward to a month and I'm like super thin. And the thing was that no one knew that. And I was posting on social media, you know, I was getting like bikinis and I was working out all the time and I was doing like these haul videos or posting on my story. Like I remember specifically this one picture that I'm wearing these Lululemon shorts and like a tank top in and I have literal apps and so many people replied to the picture and they're like, oh my God, you look so good. Drop the, you know, workout routine. And I'm like, all of those compliments, it was just instant gratification. Like literally that was what made me feel better. But then at the end of the day, it only lasts for a certain amount of time. Like that's a temporary solution. And I realized that it didn't actually make me feel any better. If anything, it was just kind of like, um, what's the word, like rewarding my bad habits. Alright guys, we're about halfway through the episode and as you can tell, it's a little bit more of a heavy topic. I'm opening up about anxiety and depression and a lot of expectations and just being honestly really, really hard on myself, which is something that I've obviously faced a lot more often since starting a career in social media and a podcast where I just tell you about my entire life. And I think whenever I get sad and I get in these ruts, I remind myself how grateful I am for not only the community that I've built and all of you guys who listen to me every week and support me, but also the brands that make this possible. Macy's, I'm talking to you. You guys, I've been working with Macy's since the beginning of 2022. And when they said that they wanted to support my podcast, it was honestly like exactly what I needed. It was like the validation. It was just a brand saying, we believe in you. We love you as a person. We like 
we want to see you succeed. And to me, that kind of support from brands is another reason that kind of just keeps me going. So if you guys would love to support me, I have a landing page on Macy's website. And I was like, it is just so wild to me too that I get to work with Macy's. So if you want to see some of my favorite products, I have a landing page. It is macy's.com forward slash FOW. It's all of my favorite things. I've added even some gift ideas for, for boyfriends for Valentine's Day last week. Um, just really every anything and everything is on there and I would so appreciate it if you guys checked it out because Macy's has been such a backbone for me these past couple of weeks and I'm just so appreciative of it. So thank you guys and back to the episode. One thing that I do that I've done a lot, a lot lately and I, I think especially with um, a beach trip coming up this weekend is people always ask me like, how do you not compare yourself to other people? And I don't, I don't think that that's the thing that I struggle with. Um, rather, comparing myself to myself. Because the thing is, like, if I know exactly what I look like when I weigh X, Y, Z, then I will compare myself to that. Because I know that that's, like, an achievable thing that I can get because I've done it in the past. And I think at this point in my life, this time last year, was when I was the skinniest. It was when I had extensions. It was when I had just gotten like Botox for the first time. And I, on, on the outside, I looked my absolute best, but on the inside, I felt my literal worst. And like, nobody knew that. Everybody just thought I was like doing so great. And I was just glowing from the inside out. But really it was like, I was glowing from the outside in and like internally there was nothing. Like I was just so sad. Um, and then another thing too is like, I was insecure about my clothes. Like I see people, I mean, I moved to Texas and obviously the style here is a little bit different and you know, you're on social media all day long and you see these influencers who are getting free shit all day. And it's like, oh my God, I need that. Like I need that. I would be so much prettier. Boys would like me if I wore this, or I would feel better about myself if I wore this, or if I had this purse or these shoes. And then I got that stuff and I do get that stuff. And I'm so grateful for that. And like you would think from the outside looking in that getting all of those free things would make you feel better and like it would solve all of your problems. And I'm here to tell you that it doesn't. It doesn't at all because I get these packages of clothes and I open it up and I put it on and I look in the mirror and I'm like, I fucking hate this. I hate what I look like. And those are the things that like I don't share online because right you don't you don't want to seem like you're not grateful but it's like it's hard to be grateful for something when you don't feel good and like the physical insecurities is like honestly I think what derives a lot of it is just not feeling comfortable in your own skin not being like confident in your own skin um my teeth I mean my front tooth is fake and I know I joke about it a lot but it truly is something that I'm insecure about and like when you have an insecurity and you know you're self-conscious about it and then you see other people start to notice it and start to point it out and they make a comment that they think is very lighthearted and they don't think it means anything at all that is validating like your own insecurity that is what tells me like shoot i should be really insecure about this tooth and then i'm sitting there for hours going in a loophole of searching fucking veneers like I just convinced myself that I need to get an entire new set of teeth because one person validated the fact that like I should be insecure about this fake tooth. And it's just, I hate that I am like this. And I wish that like there was a solution because it, it's not like this every day. And that's the thing is like, there's days where I feel really good and there's days where I feel really bad. And I know that other people feel the same way that on the days that you feel bad, it completely outweighs the good. And those are the days that suck you in and it like mentally drains you. And then to bounce back from that, it's really, really hard. Um, and I mean, just in terms of like your physical insecurities, the one thing that I've learned is that it doesn't matter how much money you spend. It doesn't matter how many things you do to fix yourself. It doesn't matter how many instant external, external validation that you get from people, you know, the compliments all of those things, it only lasts so long. And like getting Botox or losing weight or 
getting new clothes, getting your nails done, getting your teeth fixed, all of those things, like it fixes you for a little bit, but the real thing that needs fixed is literally your heart. And how do you do that? I don't know if I'm being honest, like I, I really don't know, but that's a huge reason that like keeps people from enjoying their lives is on the days that you don't feel good and the days that you don't want to do anything because you don't necessarily like yourself that much. You don't want to go out. You don't want to have fun on weekdays. Like you don't feel like your best self and that's normal. Like I, I don't want people to have those days, but I know that a lot of people do have those days. So why act like we don't? Like that's not helping. Um, Another thing that I think really takes a toll on people are relationships. And oh my God, I'm going to be completely honest with you. This entire past year, probably the most stressful thing of my life. I mean, a public relationship is so stressful. Um, People like tattle on you people send your partner messages they like try to tear you down or you know when people have so many opinions about your relationship it takes a really big toll on yourself and also the relationship like those people's thoughts and opinions they nip at you and they take away from like what you actually have and it makes you insecure and then like that insecurity projects into your relationship and then that insecurity, it it relates to anxiety and paranoia and just this constant feeling of like, oh my God, when is this going to end? Because even when things are so good, it's like, I don't deserve this. Like I, I literally, I think about Connor all the time where I'm like, pe- I've seen people make comments and I mean, granted, it's only a few comments here or there, but I always wonder like, what are people saying behind closed doors? Because if there's three people who are bold enough to say she's not pretty enough for him, he's too good for her. She's way more into him than he is into her. What are people saying behind closed doors? Like I post, I mean, we, we post videos together and um, generally it's always like nice comments, but that doesn't mean that I don't know that out of all of the thousands of people who share the videos that they probably aren't saying something negative. And it's like, how do you not let that get to you? I don't know because it does get to me. I, and. And I feel like a lot of people think that I'm the person to give you advice about how to not let it get to you. But honestly, I'm the person that needs your advice. Um, I mean, people just constantly pressuring for an answer of like wanting to define what the relationship was when it literally wasn't anything. I mean, for the first time in a very long time, I've started to open up about my relationship. And then it's almost just kind of like, anything that I do feel comfortable opening up about is not enough. And it's gotten to a point where I'm like, okay, I I feel guilty for even saying this because I mean, it's my own damn fault that I got people so invested in this relationship and, you know, in, in what's going on between us that every time I'm on TikTok live, I'm just bombarded with questions about him. And then it's kind of like, do you even care about me? Or like, do you just care about who I'm dating or, You know, it's like, is that the most interesting thing about me? And then I I question myself. I'm like, maybe it is the most interesting thing about myself. And then you let that thought kind of spiral and consume you. And then you start to believe it. And then when you believe those thoughts, it makes you like not want to open up about it. And I will say when so much of my life is like so open on social media, there are certain things that are kind of left unsaid and kept to myself in private and I I like can't help but feel guilty for not sharing it because people's comments are they get to me it's like why can't you just confirm it I'm like I have confirmed it what do you fucking want you want like you want like an official coming out video like why (laughs) why does that validate our relationship anymore like if I know that it's real and I like am you know happy with it then why do I need to prove it to you, you know? And then another thing too is like, I guess when things are going so good and you just have this like, this gut feeling inside of you that you're like, okay, it's too good though. Like something has to be wrong, right? Like 
something has to end and you just you live with that like being kept on your toes of the anxiety and paranoia of like this is too good to be true so like what is wrong with it that feeling also consumes you and keeps you from wanting to like progress your your relationship with that person because you're guarded and like you don't feel as though you can truly be your full self and be vulnerable because you have all of those doubts and like all of the doubts truly are from within it's not anything that happened in the relationship it, it's it's your own thoughts about yourself and other people's opinions who don't even know you and then I think like why do I give a shit what anybody thinks about it you know but then there I am scrolling on TikTok for hours and hours out of my day just reading reading comments and reading DMs and just wondering like what comments and DMs weren't sent to me but were said to their friends talking shit about me. I don't know. It's it's just something that I've really, really let consume me. And I guess more recently, I've thought about it more because I have been like more open about dating him um it's like not really a secret anymore and not that it ever was a secret it's just that like we literally weren't together so people kept wanting us to say that we're together when we weren't and we were trying to figure it out and then it's like this line between it it's this line between like gosh i don't even know like what is real and what's not real like are we together because people want us to be or like what's going on are we just doing it for the videos and then i was confused he was confused everybody's opinions made it worse and I mean now we're in a really good place but like I have to say that um it definitely does like get to me and I know a lot of people have similar you know situations with their relationship where you are paranoid about your partner or you're constantly thinking about what people are saying about your relationship I mean gosh one way to make you feel insecure is to look at your Instagram posts and look at the insights and see how many times your picture was sent to other people I mean, you don't know who that's sent to. If it's a picture with your boyfriend or, you know, somebody that you really care about and it, the picture was sent a hundred times, you're like, well, what is, what is that saying? And I don't know, you, you let those thoughts like fester. And then if it festers enough, it builds into something that keeps you from thinking about anything else. So uh, that, yeah, that's what I had to say about relationships. Um, oh my God. Another thing that I've been super like stressed and anxious about, and oh God, I know so many girls right now are going through this. It's seasonal depression, right? It's the winter. Like everybody's been hibernating for months. It's freezing cold outside. Um, I was just in New York and God, I cannot ever live in the North again. Um, it gets so dark outside and like I'm pale, okay? And I have really dark hair. And so when I'm pale, that hair is obviously like a lot more noticeable. And then I'm insecure about that because I'm about to go to a vacation um, where I have to wear a bathing suit. And I know this time of the year is really stressful for a lot of people, especially if like me, you struggle with body dysmorphia and you don't feel comfortable in like your skin and how you look, especially when you're in a piece of clothing that is literally so revealing. And so I'm going to Tulum this weekend and this whole week, literally I've just been thinking about like, oh my God, I, I need to get so many things done. Like I'm going on this trip with a boy I love and I don't want him to see my bikini line. Like what if I have ingrown hairs or razor burn or I'm wearing a bathing suit? Like what if he sees my cellulite on my butt, you know? Or like, oh my gosh, I need to get my toes redone. I haven't had a pedicure in so long. Um, or I, I need to buy new clothes because I, I don't want to wear bathing suits I've already worn before and I want to post pictures and I like want to do this and I want to do that and it's just it's like when is it ever enough honestly like when am I ever going to be satisfied and I don't know like maybe when I stop reaching for all of these things to fix my problems but I will say um going on a beach and like being literally so exposed is really terrifying after like not wearing a bathing suit for months um so definitely causes a lot of stress and i relate to anyone out there um i know a lot of people in college are getting ready for spring break and it is kind of like a toxic time you know all of these people are spending all of their time working out and trying to get fit for the beach and who am i gonna hook up with on spring break and 
there's so many people who are around you that it's really hard not to compare yourself to them. So I totally get that. Um, I would say one of the things that I've realized is I don't credit myself enough for the things that I do like about myself. And I fixate on the negative things like a lot. Um, And I really don't acknowledge the things that I do like unless I'm in a situation like this where I'm forced to because I'm trying to give you something motivational. (laughs) Or I actually played a card game um, the other day with Connor and like one of the questions was, what's your favorite thing about your body? And that's probably the first time that I've even thought about it, like maybe ever, because I've never really thought about what I love. I just always think about what I hate and what I can fix and what I can change and like what makes me imperfect, imperfect, imperfect. And so I've tried, I've been trying to do a better job of that where I'm like, okay, I don't like this dimple on the back of my leg or on my butt, but I do like that my legs now have a line on the side on my thigh because I may have gained weight and I don't like the number on the scale, but what I do like is the amount of strength that I have and the fact that I am building muscle and maybe I can focus on that instead of the negative side or maybe I don't love my tooth, right? Maybe like I'm not super happy about that, but I do love my smile and I feel like my smile can light up a room if I allow it to. But if I don't allow myself to kind of like show that with people because I'm insecure about my tooth, then like that's that's kind of what I'm holding myself back from. Or maybe I don't like my acne around my jawline right now, but I do love my eyes and I have beautiful eyelashes. Like there are so many alternatives of things that you can say about yourself. and, And I feel like I just maybe need that reminder so I stop fixating on the bad. And so if you're listening to this, this is your reminder. Um, write down or just verbally say out loud or maybe just say it in your mind, like things that you do like about yourself. And you don't need to say it in a mirror because I know a lot of people say that. But as I said at the beginning of this episode, sometimes talking to yourself in a mirror, you just don't want to look at yourself. And so eventually you start hyping yourself up enough that you can't stop looking at yourself in the mirror. (laughs) And there are days, trust me, that I feel that way. I look in every fucking reflection in the world. Like I walk past a window and I I stop and look at myself in it. I walk past my TV that's off and I see myself in the reflection I stare at myself. There are days that I feel so good and so confident and I just like, I feel like I can conquer the world. And then there's days where I get in a funk like this and I'm like disgusted that I don't want to look. And it's almost better if I don't look and I'm here to tell you not that that it's okay but that it's normal and there's so many people out there that feel the same way um another thing oh my god you guys so you remember a few episodes back that I was talking about I got a yeast infection okay well TMI but I like it has not gone away which leads me to believe that it wasn't treated correctly because I went when I was in LA. And so I feel like just for the past couple of months, I just have not felt like good about my body. Like I just have not felt confident and like your sexual health is such a huge determining factor of like not feeling 100% yourself. And so I went back to uh, the doctor and I got prescribed medication, uh, like antibiotics. And then literally I start taking the antibiotics. I'm like, okay, cool. Like everything's gonna be good. Okay, well, I get a yeast infection two days later. And I'm like, of course, I'm literally going on a vacation. And the, the antibiotics that they gave me makes you like super prone to getting yeast infections. And I'm like, God, this is just an ongoing thing over and over and over again. And so that's just like another insecurity that's been making me so anxious and paranoid and just like, thinking about, oh my God, I had to put on a bathing suit and I feel like gross. Yeast infections are no fun, girls. <laughs> like go go to the doctor, go to the CVS Minute Clinic. That's where I go. Um, I trust them with my life there. And it's also just really easy to get into. Uh, there is an OBGYN that my friend Madison recommended to me in Austin. Her name's Karen Kish. If any Austin girls are listening to this and you need a recommendation, um, OBGYNs I have found take a lot longer to get in though. So if you have something that's like more urgent, um, CVS Minute Clinic has like really helped me. But I mean, just like your physical health as well is a huge factor. Like if you don't feel good, healthy, and you're not fueled and 
you know, you have something going on that you know is like not right, you're feeling a little off balance, that's another reason why you could be not so fun on weekdays. <laughs> okay, the next one that I have is about friendships. Um, and so this is something that I talk about on my podcast all the time, right, is like how you make friends post-grad and how it's so important to find the people that you want to surround yourself with. And there's a difference between weekday friends and weekend friends. And it's so easy, right, to find those people that you can go out with in social situations on a weekend. You can go drink with at a bar. Um, but it's not as easy to find the friends that you can just do mundane things with and you have fun with them. Like going for a walk and not talking or sitting in the same room and, and just not even speaking to each other, but just enjoying their presence. Like those are the types of friends that are hard to find. And something that's ma been making me like super anxious lately is that I really don't go out as much anymore. Um, and I think that I feel very guilty for that because a lot of fun on weekdays when I first started this podcast was about going out and maybe a lot of people took that as like blacking out at a bar on a Wednesday night. But the thing with that is I was compensating for not liking other parts of my life. So like to drink for a few hours for a night and get drunk and like have a good time and let loose was my kind of way of coping. And I feel like lately, um, I just don't do that as much because I found a lot more joy in doing other more wholesome things that I feel like are kind of helping me grow and helping give me like mental clarity, I guess. Um, but because I don't go out as much, I am like paranoid that I'm going to lose friends or what are my friends saying about me because I don't want to hang out with them on Saturday night because I don't want to go to a bar. Um, and then I, I kind of think about it and I'm like, well if they are saying bad things about me or they don't want to hang out with me anymore, then are they really my friend? Because like a true friend would understand that you have different ways that you can have fun and like you don't need to black out in order to spend time together. And so if that's the only way that they want to hang out with me, then maybe, maybe they're not actually my friend. So having like that paranoia lately has been a lot and also just social anxiety of going out like, All right, guys, let's do a pulse check. How is everyone doing on their New Year's resolutions? I made it a goal that I was gonna wake up every morning and work out. I was gonna take control of my physical, mental, and you know, just overall health and diet. And today I woke up and I did a cycling class, but it's a lot easier to work out when it's warm outside, right? I was in New York uh, a couple weeks ago now and absolutely brutally cold. I totally understand that you can definitely lose motivation, especially at the beginning of the year, once the hype of New Year's resolutions kind of dies down. So if you're looking for some co to maybe walk yourself to the gym. Maybe you just need a new pair of leggings or a new sports bra, something that'll kind of motivate you to get into the gym and to take control of those goals. Macy's has you covered. You can head over to macy's.com forward slash FOW. It's just so crazy to me because I never used to be this kind of person. Like I loved social settings and I, I mean, I still do to an extent, but I think when like my life is now revolved around social media and my success is dependent on it, I'm very paranoid that any day it could be cut loose and I could be canceled for doing something and God forbid I'm out and I'm drinking at a bar and I do something stupid or I'm like dancing on a table or I'm being disrespectful or I'm way too drunk and I shouldn't be there and somebody's recording me or I meet somebody who doesn't have a good encounter with me and then that goes viral on TikTok. Like, I just constantly spiraling on all of the what ifs and I think all of the what ifs keep me literally from having like fun on weekdays because I'm like I'd rather protect myself than put myself in a vulnerable position where I could like do something that could you know put me in a bad bad position and so like the social anxiety of going out and you know meeting new people and just always wanting to make sure that when people meet me, it's like the kind of person that I want to be and the Jenna that I want them to know um, is it's a lot of stress. And so I keep myself from doing that a lot. But then because I don't go out, I, I feel guilty about it because that is what the podcast started as, right? Like, I know that was never really my intention, but a lot of people who didn't know me and liked the idea of fun on weekdays, they, they liked it because they're like, oh, I 
fucking hate my job. I'm going to go to a happy hour at, at 5 p.m., which that's perfectly okay. Like there's so many different ways you can have fun on weekdays. And that's going to be a whole nother episode in itself is talking about, you know, how you can have fun without going out, without drinking, without having to be in a situation where like maybe you're compromising your values. And so that'll be a whole nother episode. But the thing about like the career as well is I know a lot of people get in funks and they get, you know, worked up about their job. And it's no different for me. Um, I feel like if anything, I, which is crazy to say, um, I, I sometimes look back at my time working at TikTok in my nine to five and I miss it because I'm like, I did not have nearly as much like mental stress working there as I did now. Um, because like I said, when my career is dependent on what people think of me and like people's support of me, their words just carry so much more value. And when people's words carry more value than your own, it's like really, really easy to lose sight of yourself. And if I allow myself to be in these funks for more than like a couple of days, I just let myself be in a really dark place. And at that point, I'm like, okay, I'm not putting out videos. I'm not putting out TikToks. I'm not doing episodes, which puts me behind schedule. And then if I'm behind schedule, then I'm scrambling to get an episode done. And then if I'm scrambling and it's last minute, then I'm not proud of it. And I listen back to it and I'm like, I don't even wanna listen to what I'm saying because that's not me. That's not how I feel. And I know a lot of people say like, well, why don't you just, you know, take some time off of social media? And that's the thing. When social media is your full-time job, you can't. Like, you can't. You have brands depending on you. You have people depending on you. And that's one thing that I am so incredibly grateful for that always brings me back down to earth. Like, whenever I get stressed out, I'm like, there are so many people who believe in me and, like, just genuinely love me as a person. And brands that back me and fully believe in what I'm doing and they know I have a capability to like bring so much light to a world and people like Macy's that literally is my sole one sponsor for my podcast I know that they're gonna listen to this episode and be like we're so proud of you Jenna you know like to have people and brands that support me and just believe in me and don't have like these high expectations of me I mean I know people do have high expectations of me, but like, they're not going to be disappointed in me. You know what I mean? I don't, I'm not entirely sure if that like makes sense. But another thing that I just often think about is like, how long is this going to last? You know, I don't know. Like, am I still going to be doing a podcast in five years from now? And that's something that everybody gets stressed about is just asking that, that question of, Oh, what's your five-year plan? Why? Why are we asking people that? Nobody knows what's going to happen in five years. If you would have asked somebody that in 2019 and they said, what's your, you know, your plan for next year, any single thing that they would have said wouldn't have happened because COVID happened and nobody could have expected that. I mean, there's things that happen in your life every single day that you can't expect. You can't foreshadow. And I guess like thinking about a career right now that I have that is so like, time sensitive in my mind like I I think about it as something very temporary that can be taken away from me at literally any moment it gives me a lot of stress because like I don't know what my backup is I truly don't I mean I could go back to a corporate job at any at any time but like I don't know what my game plan would be for that you know and for me to be somebody who sits behind this microphone every week and I'm giving you advice about your careers when yet I don't even have any advice for my own career it doesn't feel like true You know what I mean? And so oftentimes I just, a lot of my stress and a lot of the reason why I get in this headspace is because I just feel like I'm so contradictory. Contradict, is that a right word? Is that the right word? I don't know. Um, One thing that I did yesterday, which seriously, I mean, this is not the Connor show, but he truly is like so, so great to me. And he's sitting there and, you know, he sees me upset. I'm crying. I like, just didn't get anything done that I needed to do yesterday and it was really stressing me out because I'm like well if I don't do it today like I'm gonna have to do it tomorrow and then I'm gonna have to overcome like the mental hurdle of you know being prepared for that and he's like well what can I do like how can I make you feel better and that's the thing which leads me into my last little segment of this episode is how to get out of a funk 
So it's great to surround yourself with people who are supportive and want to listen to you and want to help you. But the thing is, nobody can help yourself other than you. Like it truly has to come from within. It has to be your own doing. You have to be the one that wants to pull yourself out of the funk because people can help you all they want. But if you don't want to accept their help and you don't want to change and you don't want to give yourself a better, healthier mindset and you don't want to do something that's going to, you know, turn your day around, then then you're just going to be stuck like that forever, you know, until you eventually decide that you want to. So just knowing that you are in control of your own life and when you are in these funks, it's okay to be in them. You can be in it for a day, a few hours, a week, a month. But the more time you allow yourself to be in it, the more time you're taking away from your life and being able to enjoy it to the fullest. Um, the, no- the next thing that I had in terms of getting yourself out of these funks is just, I said this uh, before in the episode, but we are our own biggest critics and we notice things about ourselves that no one else notices. And I think maybe taking a step away from yourself and maybe looking at yourself in somebody else's eyes might help. Um, I mean, I don't have like 100% advice for this because it's something that I'm trying to learn too. And I think that's another great thing is just having a community that understands you and is supportive and wants to talk to you. Like when I do open conversation about these types of things, the outpouring love and support that I get from you guys is just insane. And so if I can show you guys that I'm just another random person who happened to stumble into this really like weird career change (laughs) just trying to figure out my life with you if this can help you then like that's that's my only goal um another thing that i really love i was actually scrolling on instagram right before doing this uh episode because i said that i had recorded first listened back to it didn't love it um spent some time just like debriefing you know putting my mind on something else and as i was scrolling i saw one of my friends, uh, her name, oh my gosh, I, I have hiccups right now. Her name is All Things Lillianne on Instagram, and she does all of these really adorable, cute, handwritten, you know, like graphics. And the one that she wrote today, which I feel like was literally just for me, was a bad day does not mean a bad life. And I think that is so important to remember is that every single life, no matter how great you think somebody's life may be, everybody has bad days and it's normal and like those bad days are what helps you have better days um and also too you don't need to feel guilty about it like I think I constantly feel guilty about you know like not having fun on weekdays because like that's my brand you know and I have so many things to be grateful for and I have such a great life but just because you do you know have a lot of really great things in your life doesn't mean that you need to invalidate your own feelings like feel the way that you feel know that you're allowed to allow yourself you know I don't really know what I was trying to say there (laughs) I was getting a little too deep into like the TED talk inspiration wisdom there but you know what I'm trying to say is that even if you do have a really great life you don't need to feel guilty about having a bad day that's exactly it because we all have bad days um another thing is honestly I feel like sitting and talking about this literally was my way of healing in a sense um i said that sometimes these episodes are good for me to just take my own advice and i feel like talking out loud and verbally saying how i feel is like healing in itself and so maybe you're listening to this podcast while you're on a walk or in the car or maybe you're laying in bed and you're having an off day and you're listening to my podcast and maybe this podcast is what's helping you get through your bad day. Well, you know what? Me too. (laughs) Because when this podcast comes out, I'm gonna listen to it back and I'm gonna realize that like I'm not alone and I'm gonna look at myself in a third person and think, okay, I relate to Jenna Palak. Like I feel the same way that she feels and if she can get out of this mood, so can I. So. Um, thank you guys for listening to this episode. I know it's a little bit offbeat of my typical episode and hopefully next week I'll be back and recharged up. Uh, like I said, I'm going to Tulum, so I'm very excited. Uh, gosh, I have, I have so much stuff to do 
And um, I'm just honestly really excited for the chance to just unplug this weekend. And I encourage you all to do the same thing. So my advice for you this week is take a night where you just don't look at social media. I know it's so easy to just lay in bed and scroll and scroll and scroll on TikTok. I did this last night and today, honestly, it's probably the only reason why I was able to record this episode because I did have a lot more mental clarity was from like 9 p.m. or 10 p.m., you know, for like a couple hours before you go to bed. For me, I go to bed at like one or two. <laughs> um, don't look at your phone. Literally, like put put your, you know, alarms on for the morning so you wake up in time for whatever you need to do. But don't look at your phone before you go to bed and don't even like watch TV, honestly. Like just do something for yourself in your own thoughts. You can be in silence. Maybe you can play music. Maybe you can play my podcast. Put on a face mask. Do your nails. Um, maybe read a book. Maybe make some popcorn. And just sit and be alone and don't look at social media because, God, I'm telling you, it's like really the root of a lot of my depression. I don't even know if I would say depressed. Like a lot of my anxiety comes from social media. And so taking some time away from it, you need that like 100%. So that's my advice on what to do. And I will talk to you guys when I'm back from Tulum. Hopefully I'll be a little tanner, a little sun kissed. And I think I'll be a little bit more refreshed too. So just remember if you're ever in a funk, you don't need to stay in it. And I am here to help you get out of it. So love you all so much and I'll talk to you next Tuesday.